Now, welcome back to Black Renaissance. Up now, I am speaking with photographer Ed Drew. He's an artist and also a National Guardsman with a very unique perspective on the arts. Welcome, Ed. Hi. It's so good to have you. Um, You really do have a unique backstory. As we said, you are a photographer and an artist and also a National Guardsman. So tell us how you came to this point in life where you're straddling both of these worlds. I've always wanted to be an artist and I've always wanted to... um, I wanted to serve my country. I wanted to do something really cool. And uh, having the two together was just kind of like a natural, that's, that's who I am. I just like both of them. And and, um, and then I came to San Francisco and I, I came to this art school, San Francisco Art Institute. And from there, it just opened up the world for me as far as art's concerned. What did you discover at the Art Institute? What did you start studying and practicing and how did that really spark your passion for the arts? Uh, I think it was the freedom of, of range as far as being an artist is concerned. And, and what the Art Institute did for me was it allowed me to be an artist um, and, and reach my full potential. Before that, I had been reading books, and, and uh, it was kind of like a, a one-man show where I just kind of liked art, and I would go to museums a lot. Mm-hmm. But uh, once I got into the Art Institute, that's when I really like just kind of threw myself into art. And, and they were so welcoming, and, and they allowed me to to practice different practices as far as uh, sculpture and, and um, printmaking and all these things. So it allowed me to be, grow as an artist. And, and that's what made me who I am now. Now, for a lot of people, they can't imagine, you know, like I said, get, these two worlds of being in the military, you've traveled mm-hmm. extensively in the military and were mm-hmm. active duty for six years? Active duty for six years. Then I worked for the Army for three and then uh, National Guard going on uh, five and a half, almost six years. Okay, so this, and at the same time, you knew that you were passionate about the arts and that you did ultimately Always. want to be a photographer. Oh, from a young boy, I remember like drawing on, on our wall this, this huge Mayan glyph. It took me like eight hours to, to draw it. Um, and I thought that was normal. I, I just didn't see anything odd about it. And, you know, my mom was like, oh, it's a great job. And it covered the whole wall. <laughs> oh um, and, and that was, I was 10 years old. Yeah, And so it just kind of followed me, and then I joined the military, and I absolutely love the military, love serving the country, and then um, art just is who I am. And that actually shows in your work. Let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of stills that, that we have here of your photography. What are we looking at right here? Uh, that's a self-portrait, actually. And um, a, a lot of my work is, is intuitive. I, I, I've seen a lot of art. I've been all over the world, and, I, and I've... That, that actually was on school grounds, too. Um, it, it's me sitting there, and if you can see on my, on my lap, that's my uniform from Afghanistan. Uh-huh. And it was a subconscious uh, thought to, to put that on my lap as kind of telling people, like, this, I, I'm in the military. This is who I am, and, and I'll never let it go. And you can see my hand clutching onto it, and that, that's like... I'm an artist, and I'm also in yes. the military. And mm-hmm. this photograph that we see here, what are we looking at? That's my co-pilot, and, and that photo's been everywhere. But um, It's a great photo. It, it's, you, you know what, he asked me um, while we were in Afghanistan, and these were the first tintypes of Americans uh, made in combat since the Civil War in tintype. And um, he asked me, you know, my wife is, uh, she would like a really nice portrait. Uh, would you mind making a photo for me? And, and up to that point, I'd been making photos, uh, tintypes a lot. And uh, while I was over there, and I said, sure, let's do this. And, and, you know, it became like the best photo I made while I was there. It's beautiful. And you talk about this method of doing tintype photography. A mm-hmm. lot of people don't know a, a lot about this, but this mm-hmm. is a, a type of photography that really gives these photos a kind of timeless quality. You, you mm-hmm. almost look like, yeah. you know, if you, if you don't <laughs> take into consideration the clothing, it looks like you're looking back at old, you know, Civil War photos or something like that. Mm-hmm. Tell us, that's a very involved process, isn't it? It is. It is. Um, it, it, was, it was made or it was developed during the time of the Civil War, mm-hmm. actually. So uh, it, it was very labor intensive, very, uh, there's many chemicals involved in making it. And I actually learned it at school from a graduate student. Uh-huh. Um, I had heard that he knew how to make tintypes and it was something that I'd really wanted to do for a long time. And, and so I, I asked him and, and he taught me on school grounds and, and um, that was my first tintype was made. Um, yeah. There aren't a lot of people out there who are doing tintype photography. It's sort of a no. rare, like, lost art form. No, it's, it's a lot of people like to actually um, take classes and learn how to do them, but not a lot of people actually stick with it because it's so intensive. There's so much money involved with, you know, buying chemicals and then the, the specific cameras um, for taking these photos. So, and then it takes, uh, 
if from start to finish, it'll take you up to 40 minutes to make one photo. And in this day and age where you have a digital camera or your mm -hmm. iPhone and you take a picture like that and it's done, I mean, that's mm -hmm. a very involved process. Yeah, like those exposures can take up to 10 seconds when you're outside, mm -hmm. which is a very long time considering you're outside and you've got plenty of light. But there's, there's many specific parameters to it as well as many specific ways you have to work with the chemicals. It's not just um, take a photo. It's you're, you're really um, involved in it. Mm -hmm. and, and so I'm trying to bring that... Uh, that knowledge to, to wherever I go and, and how, how I use these. Will we continue to see your work reflecting yes. um, your experience in the military? Yes. Uh, not only the military, actually I, I've, through, through my work with the military, it's, it's opened me up to, to other avenues and I was really invested in, in exploring uh, my own identity as an African American. Mm -hmm. And, and so I started this project, and I call it The Americans, and it's about different African-American groups within the United States. And I started uh, with a group in San Bruno, mm -hmm. and they're uh, basically at-risk youth who uh, farm on this organic farm, and they learn work ethics, and, and um, they learn how to work on a farm. Really? And I started photographing them and showing it. My main idea was to learn who I was, but also to show people, like, this is African Americans. This is who we are. We're not just stereotypes. We're, this is our experience. This is our experience. And I, and I was very careful to use this process because this process harks back to the Civil War, which harks back to slavery and, and a very transitional period during American history. And I wanted people to really think about this transitional period in America and how far has African Americans come since then. That's incredible. We're so excited about your work and happy to see what you bring us next, Ed. Thank For you. more information about Ed Drew's photography, you can go to edrew.com. That's edrew.com. We'll be back with more after a short break. Stay with us.